So, so far, 2024 has been a fantastic year for television. Arguably, it has been a better year for television than it has for movies. But if you want to see my best movies of the year list, go check that out. I'll put the link up right here. Today's video, I'm just going to quickly go through what I think are the best shows of the year so far. I was going to also make a list talking about the worst shows. There really haven't been any terrible ones that I've watched, at least. I'm sure there's been a lot of bad shows, but I don't watch a lot of bad television because it's harder to get invested in a bad TV show versus watching a bad movie, which is just two hours of my life, versus a television show, which could be like 10 hours. So I don't watch a lot of bad TV. But here we go, I'm just gonna go show to show. I'm gonna talk about each one individually in no particular order, except for the last one I talked about. The last one I talked about, I believe, has been the best show of the year so far. Maybe one of the best shows ever. Let's start off with The Bear Season 3, one of the newest shows that has come out. The Bear continues to be one of, if not the best show on TV at the moment. I made a video last week talking about the best TV shows that are ongoing right now, shows that are airing currently that are not finished, and I thought The Bear was either the first or second best show we have at the moment. I talked about it in length in that video, so go check check that out. But The Bear is an incredible show about cooking, about running restaurants, and the life of professional chefs. It captures the chaos, the controlled chaos of being a chef in a high-powered kitchen. It's like if Hell Kitchen was a drama show. Like a, like a fake drama show. Because I guess it's a drama show, right? This is like fake scripted drama. So yeah, Hell's Kitchen, but like WWE. If you hadn't seen the first two seasons, I won't spoil anything about the plot of season three, but it pretty much just picks off exactly where season two left. And he, although I do think it is the weakest season of the three we've gotten so far, it is still really, really strong and has all of the things that we love about it, including its incredible characters, mainly Jeremy Allen White as Carmi and Ayo Edebiri, both of which are incredible and carry the show, giving Emmy-worthy performances that I'm sure they will win more Emmys for. The best thing about the show, though, is just its high-paced dialogue, its comedy, and just how it makes you feel. It makes you feel kind of anxious. And when a show can make you feel something like that when it wants you to feel it, that's kind of incredible. Next up is one that might be a little controversial because it's a show that I never thought I'd be talking about on a list like this, at least publicly. It's a show that I love. It's one of my favorite shows ever, but I understand some people don't love it. Now I'm talking about The Walking Dead, The Ones Who Live. Now, of course, I've talked about the show online on this channel because if you did not know, I am a massive Walking Dead fan, and there's a reason why this show meant so, so much to me. If you don't know what the show is, it is essentially a continuation of The Walking Dead following Rick Grimes a character who was written off in season 10 of The Walking Dead, or season 9, I believe. I'm not going to spoil how he was written off, but he was removed from the show with the promise from the producers that eventually we would see the larger story that Rick was going off to kind of join and be a part of. And for years and years and years, we waited. We got little teases here and there, little cliff notes on what might be coming, but we got nothing and nothing and nothing for five years till finally we get this show. And not only do we get to see where Rick has been, we get to see his fight to return, return to his family, return to the show and the characters that we love. And my God, did this show live up to the hype. To me, this is one of the strongest seasons of Walking Dead television ever. Compared to literally all of the seasons that we have ever gotten on the show, this thing is magnificent. Magnificent. It is a great show that introduces us to a large-scale community and military that has corruption within it, that has so many different layers of characters, and Rick essentially needs to find his way out of this. And it's this struggle to survive, this struggle to become human again in this world that is filled with The Walking Dead, see? It's all a metaphor pretty much, kind of. But it's such a beautiful and terrific story with some of the best performances you're going to see on TV this year. My one complaint about the season is it is a little rushed. It's a story that I feel like could have been kind of dragged on for a couple seasons, maybe a movie, which we were supposed to get originally. But still, at the end of the day, I felt super satisfied by this. It's ending brought a Joe Marchione tear to my eye. And I love it. I cannot wait to see more Rick Grimes. Hopefully we get more Rick Grimes. Next up is The Boys Season 4. And this is one that is still ongoing. And it's a season that at the start of it, the first few episodes, I was not digging. I made a video about it on this channel and a lot of people took a big pile of shit on me. And you know what? I disagree with you all still. The first few episodes of the season were dull, boring, and I just did not dig the story. The following episodes have been a lot better. Although I still think this is by far the weakest season of the show, it is still one of the most outrageous, one of the most eccentric, and one of the most risk-taking shows on TV right now. The Boys is still superheroism at its best on TV. Kind of subverting the ideas of superheroes in our own society and being this ultra-violent political study. It still works. The characters are great. Anthony Starr is still perfect as Homelander, and I'm excited to see where this season's going. Yet again, I think it's the worst season of the show so far, but it's still really good. Sticking on Superheroes Invincible Season 2, we waited years for this. We waited four years for this. 
And my god, did this one live up to the weight! This show is brilliant! And I'm really only talking about the second half here. The first half we got later last year, this one we got at the beginning of this year. Invincible Season 2 is absolutely terrific. It picks up exactly where the first half of the season left off. We're still following Mark. We're still following kind of this weird journey that he's on after everything that happened with his father in the first season. And it is brutal. It is violent. The relationship with his father uh, is still kind of at the center point of the show, even, to, even though the two characters don't interact as much in the second season as a whole, but there's so much going on here. It's so glorious. It's so great. The last episode with kind of this multiverse battle that takes place is so perfect and something that we probably should have seen in a Marvel movie by now, but we haven't yet. But that is exactly how the multiverse should be done. Invincible Season 2 is amazing. How about an anime? We have solo leveling. This is, I mean, I have been kind of on an anime uh, kind of kind of detox. If you didn't know, 2022, I, was a, I went through a big anime craze. I watched in like a two-year period 100 plus animes, including One Piece. So yeah, I was not talking to many women. I'm still not. But I haven't really been in the anime that much lately. I haven't watched that many shows, but I did watch Solo Leveling, and this is one of the best animes I've ever watched. This first season of anime is absolutely brilliant. It is one of the best action shows I've ever seen, where it takes the kind of optics of D&D and fantasy and all that stuff and integrates it in, like, a modern world, like, where everybody is kind of a game master and has a level, and they have to, you know, either work their way up and gain skills, or they're kind of stuck at that level. And there's a bunch of stuff going on in the show, and we follow a character who's able to level up differently than everybody else. He's kind of the main character, like, when it comes to, like, video game points of view that he gets better where everybody else is just kind of like a standard NPC. The battles in the show are great. The characters are great. I cannot wait to see what comes next. I think season two is coming soon. Solo leveling, it's one of the best animes out there. How about Fallout? Yeah, I mean, everybody talked about Fallout when this came out. This show is so much bigger than anybody thought it was going to be. Coming from Jonathan Nolan, the brother of Christopher Nolan, Fallout is, of course, an adaptation of the Bethesda video game. A video game that a lot of people love. It depends which one, though. There's some people love and there's some people don't love. Like, I don't think many people love the original couple because they're like really hardcore strategy RPGs, right? I don't think too many people has played them. Then you got some sickos out there that love Fallout 3, right? It's an old game, hasn't really aged well. I enjoy it. It's not the best, let's be honest, unless you grew up with it. Fallout New Vegas, great game, love it. Fallout 4, that's the game that I think everybody went back and played after this. It's the first Fallout game I played, so I got some nostalgic value for it. And then Fallout 76. Fuck that. This show's great, though. It's like the perfect video game adaptation. It takes the world, the tone, and just sort of the ideas of what Fallout's supposed to be, and it adapts it in a way that still makes it feel original to the world of Fallout, but yet again, it feels familiar. It feels like something that, that we've lived in before without it feeling like a retelling, which most adaptations usually do. It is a almost perfect adaptation to a video game, one of the best we've ever gotten, and I can't wait to see what they do in Season 2. House of the Dragon Season 2. This could end up being number one by the end of the season, we don't know yet. We're only about halfway through, but yeah, it's Game of Thrones. Game of Thrones is out. I'm going to be talking about Game of Thrones. It's going to be one of my favorite shows of the year anytime there's a season of Game of Thrones. Oh, uh, the season's been great. I think it's been like maybe slightly weaker than season one just because there's so much going on that it's not always balanced and there are more changes from the source material in this season than the first one. Some that I'm not completely getting behind. Some ones that don't, don't really affect the story that much. So it's like, why even change them? But God, man, it's just still so great. The characters, the world, it is so perfect. The acting, the war, the dance of the dragons that's going on, the battles with the dragons we've gotten. This is so great. Although the last episode was a little bit fillery, I'm very excited to see what comes next in House of the Dragon. And the best show of the year so far, I don't even think it's close. This is maybe the best season of television ever, and as of right now, it's only a miniseries, but we might be getting more seasons of it. Either way, Shogun is the best thing that I've watched this year. Between movies, TV shows, rewatches, video games, this is the best thing that I have sat down to experience all year. Shogun is a bloody masterpiece. So what is Shogun? Well, it's based off a book, a book that's written about uh, kind of a fictional Japanese story that takes place in feudal Japan that is based on some fact. It's not completely in line with history, but it is sort of a fictional retelling of some historical events that happened in Japan in this time period, and it is essentially Game of Thrones set in Japan. And Game of Thrones at its best is what I'm talking about. I'm not talking about Game of Thrones Season 8 set in Japan. I'm talking about Game of Thrones Season 1, 2, 3, 4 set in Japan, condensed into one season. That Shogun. This show is brilliant. You follow a sprawling cast of characters, all of which feel just so unique and amazing. I don't think there's a single character in this show that is, like, unlikable. Or when I say unlikable, I mean a character that's just 
uh, forgettable. Every character in this show is memorable and amazing and has a moment to shine. Whether it's John Blackthorne, the Englishman who washes up on Japan and has to sort of assimilate to that culture, to that society, and we sort of watch through his eyes how this world actually is living. You have Toronaga, who's sort of this leader in the story. He's this god-tier planner. He's sort of a uh, Tywin Lannister, but maybe with a heart and a soul? Maybe? I don't know. I, I still don't really 100% believe that. Lady Mariko is such a powerful character for so many different reasons. You don't 100% ever know what she's fully thinking and her actual intentions. So you slowly kind of get them layered out to you. This person who doesn't feel like a human at first, but slowly shows her humanity and her beliefs and her strengths. And she is one of the strongest characters on television. All the villains in this show are brilliant. When the show actually does have action, it is hard-hitting and brutal and scary at times. But this show is about its politics, it's about its scheming, its dialogue, its characters talking to each other, and it is just so amazing. The Japanese culture is just shining in this show. It is so great. Japanese culture is one of my favorite things to study, and it is so awesome to see in this show, just treated with the respect that it deserves. The cinematography is gorgeous. This show feels epic. It feels huge. It feels like the weight of the world is on the line in this story. I'm just not sure if I really need to see a season two and a season three of this, especially because this adapted the whole book. And the way that this season of television and the show ended is it kind of ended in a spot where it's like, we don't really need a season two. We kind of explain to you what's going to happen in the future. It's literally the whole point of the finale that I won't spoil, but they kind of lay out, this is what's going to happen in the future because this is how we planned everything to happen in the future. This is how we scheme the game. So you don't really need to see it. Now, I kind of dig the idea of maybe doing more seasons of Shogun set in different time points of Japan and studying different maybe historical events, but of course we know some of the actors are already signed to come back, so we're going to be continuing to follow these characters. So I am a little bit concerned that, you know, Shogun Season 2 and Season 3 might still be Game of Thrones, but it might be Game of Thrones Season 8. And that scares the shit out of me. But this is a marvelous season of television that if you have not watched, what are you doing, man? Shogun is unbelievably good. That's the video, guys. Let me know what your favorite shows of the year are down below. Make sure to like this video, subscribe for more, turn on notifications. I post every single day, guys. I'll see you in the next one.